One world currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain. But you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is. But it's there. Like a splinter in your mind. Driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. When we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from FederalJack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live broadcast here on the Orion Talk Radio Network, OrionTalkRadio.com. It is August 19th, 2012. It is a Sunday, and I have a jam-packed broadcast for you all today. There's going to be a bunch of things I'm going to go over. Uh, next segment, because I've only got about uh, eight and a half minutes till we go to break, and the clip is a little longer than that. I'm going to play a uh, about a nine, almost ten minute clip from Mike Murphy's new movie, Why in the World Are They Spraying? Just a, a, a key part talking about geoengineering and weather manipulation itself. It, it came out, it premiered yesterday at the uh, Consciousness Beyond Chemtrails conference out in LA uh, afterwards Mike uploaded it to YouTube and gave me full permission to upload it to my YouTube channel which I did and I made a special page for the whole movie to be seen over at federaljack.com which I did drop the link for it into the chat room so if you go if you're in the chat room you'll see it or if you just go to federaljack.com you will see it uh, in the slider section there is a link for it and under the featured articles section there is a link for it and then of course it's listed under world news right on the front page so there's three ways for you to get to the page right off the front of federal jack to go see mike murphy's new movie why in the world are they spring and so far uh, i've actually gotten uh, one report that since i actually uploaded it to youtube like la late last night one person who's already seen it that was skeptical and on the fence has now decided that yes they are uh spraying and, and that there is enough evidence for even this skeptic to say yeah they're doing something obviously so bingo right off the bat the movie hasn't even been up 24 hours on youtube and it's already having a massive effect which is what mike and the whole crew that put together the movie wanted to and I want to give him a big thank you because he threw my name in the credits uh, under special thanks. So uh, I want to give Mike and the whole crew a big shout out and a big thank you for that. Uh, I didn't expect that. That was uh, that was uh, quite a surprise. And uh, I'm uh, actually uh, honored. And some when I first saw it, I was uh, rendered speechless for about 30 seconds. Yes, me, Mr. Loudmouth, was rendered speechless. So I want to give Mike a big thank you for that. So I'm going to be playing a clip from it, second segment. It's a powerful, powerful 
powerful documentary. Uh, in fact, Mike's coming on, I believe, let me check the calendar here, and I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the 2nd of September, so about, a, about two weeks from today, he's coming on because he's, he's jam-packed with screenings and stuff, and um, I'm actually working with him behind the scenes to get a screening down here in South Florida of his movie. We already, uh, he already had one down here. That's where I got a chance to go physically meet him in person for the first time. And um, we're going to try to pull off a, another screening of the new movie, Why. But he will be back on on Sunday the 2nd for an hour to discuss uh, the feedback and how everything's going with the new movie. But I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, to go to his website and buy a DVD copy of it. Then make... 100 copies and give them out for free. I mean, they've already it released yesterday and they already put it up on YouTube for free. So the least we could do is support them by purchasing a copy. And they, they say, go ahead and make hundreds of copies and give them out. So just buy one. That's all you got to do is buy one physical copy and copy it and pass it out to a million people. And obviously there's no copyright protection on it or else they wouldn't be telling you to go out and copy, uh, you know, make hundreds of copies and hand them out for free. So do it. It's a very, very powerful documentary. I can't say that enough. It really is. It, it blows the first one away by about 100 miles easily. Uh, it, you know, I had the screener copy a few weeks earlier, and I had the advantage of being able to tell you guys this, but you really couldn't look at it and confirm what I'm saying. Now you can. So go. It's on the DTRH Radio Archives DTRH Radio Archives, all one word, YouTube channel. That's where the radio archives for the show are. Uh, the movie's there. And you can also find a, the page I made up on federaljack.com. So I'll play the clip from that next segment. There's a few other things I want to go over. One thing that really blows my mind, uh, and I didn't realize this, if anybody is using antibacterial soap, like Dial or Soft Soap, Antibacterial soap weakens heart and muscle function, study says. And apparently, uh, the study, uh, it was led by Dr. Isaac Pasea, I think I'm pronouncing his last name wrong, sorry, Doc, if I am, of UC Davis. Uh, they introduced different levels of triclosan, which is the chemical, I guess, that's used in the antibacterial soap and other things to make it antibacterial. And it ended up weakening uh, the mice, their heart function, up to 25%. So the, the chemical that they're using in antibacterial soap to make an antibacterial gets into your skin, and it's affecting muscle function, and especially muscle function in your heart. And according to this study, at least up to 25%. Now, they say that's the, that's the max, but who knows? It could be worse, and they're just not telling you. So oh, we, I always assume their max is usually the lower end of the spectrum. But 25% is a big deal. I mean, losing a quarter of the strength of your heart. I wonder how many people that already had heart problems and are told to use antibacterial and soap actually worsen the problem. Very, very interesting. And it, this really blew my mind because I use antibacterial soap when I was a, a body piercer and I worked at a tattoo shop. But you, you have to keep yourself clean and disinfected and everything. You don't want to pass hepatitis or on to someone inadvertently because somebody might have come in and had it and they don't tell you and then you don't clean properly. So you're always very on top of it. Plus, you don't want to get anything yourself. And yet, here you come to find out that the very back antibacterial soap that they're telling you to use can weaken heart muscle tissue up to 25%. So really quick, because we've got a few minutes here, I want to give you guys a list of stuff that has this uh, product called uh, triclosan in it. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, let's see. Soaps, you have dial liquid soap, soft soap, antibacterial liquid hand soap, which that's what I used, but not anymore. Gone. I removed it. The other day, as soon as I found this out, tea tree therapy liquid soap, Provon soap, Clearasil daily face wash, um, dermal, dermatological, or oh, it's Dermatologica, I guess that's the name of the company, Dermatologica skin purifying wipes, clean and clear foaming facial cleanser, Dermaclean antibacterial lotion soap. 
NatureAid Aloe Vera 80 antibacterial soap, CVS antibacterial soap, Physoderm antibacterial skin cleanser, which is, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff, the doctors will tell you, oh, this is great for you, and they obviously have no clue what's in it. Uh, you got toothpaste, Colgate Total, uh, Breeze, Reach antibacterial toothbrush. Oh, the Reach toothbrush has it. Whitening toothpastes. And more. I'll post the link in the chat room for everybody. We're going to break. We'll be back in a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Coming back in, I'm going to lead in with the clip from Why in the World Are They Spraying? So stay tuned. So I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal. When the geoengineering really got underway with the Russians in the mid-70s, we ended up with snow in Miami. We ended up you know, with frost deep into Mexico. You know, the bizarreness of the weather really exploded on the scene when, uh, when weather engineering got going in the mid-70s. The Dakotas, in winter, they recorded a temperature of almost 100 degrees, 94 degrees. It broke the former record by 32 degrees. There's very profound things that people don't notice. Blue sky is almost never. We almost never have dew on the ground. That's a known consequence of geoengineering, if they did it, which they appear to be. It sucks the moisture out of the atmosphere. It doesn't descend, doesn't form dew. We have massive temperature disruptions. People are starting to wonder, why is it 80 degrees one day and then snowing the next day at 50 degrees or 45 degrees and then back up to 80 the day after that? When you push and pull the climate with these, these manipulation programs, of which there's a mountain of data to corroborate their existence, then, then you start to have massive fluctuations in the system. And we saw in March in the continental U.S. there were 15,232 temperature records broken. That's profound. Some of the daytime highs, the former records were broken by as much as 32 degrees. Don't people wonder what in the world is going on? Whether they want to make it snow at 45, 46, 47 degrees. I remember when 38, 39 was a big deal. Those kind of snowfalls in the upper 30s. And now that's been pushed into the 40s. There's a patent called Ice Nucleation for Weather Modification. This is a patent from NASA. It can be found online in its full form. This patent is for the creation of artificial snowstorms from what would have been rainstorms. However preposterous it sounds to people, if they look up Chinese create snowstorms, they will find a, a, a long list of articles where the Chinese Bureau of Weather Modification openly admitted that they were creating snowstorms until they did a billion dollars worth of damage in Beijing. So my question would be, if the Chinese can do this, and NASA has a patent for the same purpose, why would we believe snow events here are natural when it's snowing now regularly at 45 degrees, sometimes 50 degrees, heavy, wet, concrete snow that's full of aluminum, full of barium, full of strontium? Consider the ice pack in their first aid kit that can sit dormant at room temperature for decades until the chemicals are mixed together, at which time it creates ice. As an on-air meteorologist, I had a responsibility to my audience. There were storms that were not behaving as they were modeled or they historically would have re responded. If you can control where moisture is collected and where it's dropped, so to speak, in the form of rain or any other kind of precipitation, then you can really, uh, you can do everything. You can steer the weather system. If you want to be able to manipulate the weather, one of the things we know about the materials that are being used in the aerosols, we, we've seen everything from aluminum oxide, barium salts, strontium, copper sulfate, uh, potassium iodide, um, a number of different kinds of things, each of which have different levels of reactivity with the moisture in the air. Some 
uh, like aluminum oxide, tends to sequester the moisture. The aluminum oxide nanoparticles, which are microscopically fine and uniform in size, uh, attract the humidity, the moisture in the air, and they can. It basically forms like a nucleation process where the moisture condenses on these particles. The, with cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. These aerosol particle act, particles act as something called cloud condensation nuclei, and. Um, this is, these are sites where, these particles act as sites where cloud drops can form. Now, the one thing that we know has happened is because these are nanoparticles and they float like mad with a little bit of uh, moisture added to them, they go over the Continental Divide, and they dump all of California's rain into the Mississippi Valley, which is the reason they're having floods and tornadoes and fierce storms and odd weather back east. The effect here in California is drought. Now then if you hit that area of the sky with uh, a beam of a uh, particular kind of radiation and you can heat those particles up, just like heating up you know, your, your cup of coffee in the microwave, these particles begin to vibrate and resonate if you use the right frequency of, of uh, RF energy that they then heat the surrounding air and they will take all of that air and the moisture that's in it to a higher altitude where it's much colder and it'll condense and then become a low pressure system. Well, there, there, there's a couple of locations where they tend to be very interested in, in leaving their trails. The big one and the surprising one for me is under areas of high pressure where we do, you would expect to see the blue skies, the dry conditions. Those are prime targets for trailing. A couple of reasons. A high pressure is, is stable. It's, it's relatively still. You know, we've got the, uh, the clockwise flow around it. And if you accentuate the high, and so it's very easy to add those particulates of aluminum, barium, and whatever else they want to put in there. And as you add heat to that, those particulates then radiate the heat into the atmosphere and it warms. And what does a warming atmosphere do? Boom, it expands. And so that's one way. It's a very simple way, but it's very apparent because under the, the, the high pressure, it's supposed to be quiet. It's supposed to be still. It's supposed to be blue. And we're not seeing that. And as the storm approaches, the high begins to recede. And then they're running the flights back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and literally seeding the leading edges of the cirrus. So the cirrus canopy is accentuated. That cirrus canopy, which would maybe be two or 300 miles out ahead of a, out ahead of a cold front, is now 400. 450 miles. Based on geoengineering data, it would appear the Pacific Northwest gets an excessive amount of, of the fallout from these programs because much of the weather, much of the precipitation and the storm tracks and the jet stream move across us. So as stated by globally recognized geoengineers like David Keith, that, that that's the type of area they would want to see these particulates as incoming fronts start to uh, cover landfall. And that's exactly what we see here. When there's any kind of incoming front, we see jets everywhere. The global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns, and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. After studying my time-lapse surveillance, one of the reasons I discovered for the trails was that the persistent ones would break, they would misshape or deform, and other planes would come along and precisely mark off those locations of, of deformation. And you're not going to get that with a regular fleet, so this had to be uh, one of the primary purposes for chemtrails, in my opinion, was to measure off where we have these discontinuities showing up in the atmosphere. And in doing these actions and discovering those zones where there's different energies in the atmosphere, I think that plays very closely into their weather engineering programs of mark, surveil, and then that data goes into, into a weather model that they can then use to forecast or, once again, engineer the weather to their designs. But you can also uh, influence what happens locally with the atmosphere by um, painting the materials that these aerosols are made of with different kinds of radio frequency or RF energy, radar, microwave, the HARP system. You know, HARP is... Um 
uh, an array, a field of antennas, uh, radio frequency antennas. They're 72 feet tall, and they have a cross dipole across the top that's about 60 feet in each direction. 180 of these are in the array uh, today, so you can imagine this field. Uh, All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to cut it off there because we're coming up to the break, but you get the idea. Now, that's only a little 10-minute segment of the movie. Hey, can you imagine the rest of the evidence that's in there? So when someone says, oh, there's no proof of chemtrails or geoengineering, oh, there most definitely is. We'll be right back. Keeping in the subject of health, since not only geoengineering doesn't only affect the planet, but it also affects human health, and I was talking about the antibacterial soap affecting your heart muscle, uh, there's a few other health-related things that I want to cover really quick. One of them being this push for male birth control. Now, many people think, well, Popeye, what's the problem? Birth control for men would be awesome. We can go out and get laid as much as I want. I could, you know, stick it in to whoever I want, not have to worry. Well, first of all, do you not see what the bigger uh, goal here is? It's to keep you from reproducing. That's what Planned Parenthood comes from. Planned Parenthood was founded by eugenicists. So it's never been about, uh, you know, oh, your future, your baby will get in the way. That's, that's red herring BS arguments to get you to buy into their crap. Okay? That's what that is. Planned Parenthood was founded by eugenicists. All right? It's been proven that over 50% of the black population of the United States was never born due to Planned Parenthood. Okay? This is not hyperbole. This is fact. Go look it up. Uh, I think the guy's name is Pastor Childress. He's got, um, he put together a thing he called the Negro Project, where he studied, he went in and he started looking at, uh, you know, for, he started looking at it uh, from a scientific standpoint, I guess you could say, to see, uh, you know, exactly what the eugenics of uh, Planned Parenthood had done to the black community since Planned Parenthood's inception. And you would be completely blown away if you found out the truth. These people look at certain individuals like they're inferior. Right? Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, called black people mongrels. And uh, I'm paraphrasing here. You can actually uh, just type in Margaret Sanger on Federal Jack's little search bar, and it'll come up Margaret Sanger in her own words. And you can see she talked, uh, she talked about black people, uh, mentally unstable people. Uh, just anybody that that didn't fit their their category of being perfect in their eyes were mongrels, rats, vermin, something to be stepped on like a cockroach. I mean, this is the way these people look at any everybody else except their own, right? They found Planned Parenthood and get you to buy into their crap that they're there looking out for your best interest, and that's just not the truth. So they now they're pushing the birth control pill. For men. And I'm going to play this clip because, first of all, I'm going to point out how it's, I mean, it's totally propagandized. It's from HLN, which is a, a, a little spinoff of CNN. It's owned by CNN. It's more like entertainment and, and news mixed together. But these two are on here talking. And, they, you know, they play it up kind of like a joke. Uh, one of them, I guess, is a doctor. But you'll see. I'll point it out. It, wait till you hear what this thing, how this thing works. It literally destroys sperm. But no, there's no chance that it'll ever cause you any re permanent reproductive harm. Where have I heard that before? Hey, Dr. Reddy, so far, you know, the male birth control pill has only been tested in mice. Mm -hmm. How does it work? So what this is, it's a protein called JQ1. And what's unusual about it is it's able to actually get to the testicles. There's actually a barrier called a blood testes barrier that mm -hmm. keeps the testicles safe. So up till now, it was hard to get something to actually get there. Do you see what she just said? It's to keep the, tes the, te blah. It's to keep the testicles safe. Safe being the operative word right there. To keep the male testicles safe. And yet she says, up until now, 
we weren't able to get anything through. But now we can. So do, do you not see the speaking out of both sides of your mouth? The barrier is there to protect your testicles, and they have to figure out a way to get past that in order to attack your sperm. That is not natural. That is not good. Hello? Pull your head from your ass. Men, would you let somebody just walk up and take a nail and drive it through your testicle with a hammer? No. Why would you allow this? This molecule is so small, it's able to cross into there and bind to proteins to prevent sperm from being formed. Okay, so that's the science of it all, but could it be just as effective as the pill is for women? Yeah, in the mice studies, it mm -hmm. did seem to be just as effective as a pill is for women, somewhere between 98 and 99% effective is what I would guess based on the mouse studies. Okay, now I got to tell you what guys who are watching the show right now are probably thinking, okay, if I take this, it'll work, but will I be infertile? And that's obviously been one of the major concerns. But in the mice study, it was an injection in the study that was given every day. They're hoping it'd have to be a pill that would be taken every day. And yes, it's absolutely reversible. When they stopped giving the mice the injection in two weeks, they were back to normal. So they're doing it with mice now. How far away do you think this is? Unfortunately, I think it is going to be several years down. Oh, unfortunately. Unfortunately. You see how she's taking... Uh, she's extrapolating an educated guess, okay, out of the study done on mice. And she's already saying, well, yeah, this is how it'll work on human men. But it hasn't been tested on human men yet. Do you see how they push this crap on you? This is almost like a video news release, except that you see um, this whatever doctor once in a while on here. And this the, the other guy is actually one of the anchors. But... If you notice, there's not really uh, anything else in the background. They're just kind of hanging out on a set, but there's not that you know you don't really see too much going on. There's nothing on the the screens in the background, so you could tell it's kind of a quiet set. It's obviously a setup, so it's a form of a uh, almost like an infomercial to hype everybody up. Oh yay! You can go out and screw like rabbits now. Responsibility? What the hell is that? Personal accountability? Pfft, don't worry about that. Run around sticking your dick in everything. Don't worry. We'll make it so your little spermies never even form. They'll just never exist. But don't worry. It's not permanent. And in five years from now, um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Not only does this pill uh, destroy your reproductive system, but it also gives you testicle cancer. This is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. Okay. Why are we retarding the body's natural processes because some dickhead in a white lab coat says, hey, it's all good. You know, they said the polio vaccine was effective and it worked too. And history has proven that to be a complete and utter lie. Why do we listen to these people? It's the mad scientist. And we're just, yeah, okay. It's cool. And you hear her. She's trying to push educated guesses uh, as fact, and it hasn't even been tested on humans yet. That is propaganda. That is mind control. And that is lies. But remember, the Supreme Court ruled that the mainstream media can lie to you and report it as news, and it's not illegal. On the road, because okay. it's going to take a lot of experimentation. we got to find enough guys to test it. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take a few years. All right. Well, speaking of that, by the way, finding guys to test it, do you think that guys, based on your practice, and I know this is kind of a guess, mm -hmm. But do you think guys will want to take this? Do you think they'll want to step up and, and, and take a pill? I think it's a great option in the future, and I think it's going to be a wonderful thing. We, we've needed this for a long time yeah. to have guys take responsibility. And this doctor knows neuro-linguistic programming because she's making certain motions with her hands as she's saying, yes, it's a great option. If you understand neuro-linguistic programming, which if you don't, NLP, go look it up. Sean Hannity does it too as do others, but if you watch this video, she's literally doing it with her hands. Uh, it's off of um, Pigmind 3's YouTube channel. Rob was on last week. Uh, it's titled New Birth Control Pill for Men. Just put that in this thing, uh, the search bar on YouTube, and it'll pop up. And Because you, you, I want you to see the video. Because you'll see her with her NLP, her neuro-linguistic programming, to get you to believe, guys, that yes, you should take the pill. But I think they're going to be nervous, just like we do more tubal ligations in our office than 
urologists do vasectomies. Mm -hmm. Guys don't like anything that messes with those areas. So I think it's... <laughs> yeah, you, you think? And she, you know, don't worry. I think people will blah, blah, blah. And I, I you know, that's the end of the clip. It's disgusting. So guys, why don't, in, instead of doing it slowly and possibly causing yourself cancer or anything else, why don't you just, you can anesthetize it, you know, have a nurse anesthetize your nuts, and then just take a railroad spike and a hammer and go out in the back and bam! Because that's essentially what you're doing. So, birth control pill for men equals railroad spike through testicles. Think about that. Don't buy into this eugenicist crap. All right, as promised, I uh, during the break, I dropped in both the links in the chat room for the article about the soap and the list of stuff that it has in it. But for the listeners that hear this on Rebroad or the people that pull the archive, because there's a lot of people that listen to the archives because they're working or whatever, uh, or for whatever reason, they might not be able to listen to the show live that day. So anybody that listens to it later on or you're not near the chat room currently... I will post it on Federal Jack after the show. I'll post, uh, I'll repost the article, and then I'll make a separate repost of the list of stuff that uh, has this this crap in it. And um, I urge you to, you know, don't just rely on that. Do your homework. Check it out. Do your homework on everything. In fact, the other day, I was telling Joe Joseph this uh, off air. I was speaking uh, to him and Tim Watts. And I happened to be grocery shopping at the time. And I was in one of these big uh, chain places because I had to go there to pick something up that only they had at the, in the, the local area where I am. Not Walmart because I refuse to go to Walmart. But while I was in there, I was like, let me, I, I just, I, I wanted to check something. So I went over by the pancake mix aisle because I wanted to, I was going to make my wife some pancakes. And I go to pick up the mix I noticed they don't have the regular stuff that I get, so I wanted to see what they had. And, of course, now, because I understand about health issues, I look through everything, right? So I pull one of the boxes off the shelf, and it's a, a big brand name, and I start looking through it. And it's got uh, a chemical in it. In fact, I have to find my cell phone here so I can actually tell you the name of it because I actually took a picture of it so I could remember but it's got this chemical in it that is made up of um, alum powdered aluminum, uh, sodium hydroxide, and uh, something else, if I remember correctly. I have to look up the three ingredients, but it's called um, sodium aluminum phosphate. Sodium aluminum phosphate. So anybody with a smartphone, you can sit there and just go right from the store, uh, I did a Google search right while I was there. So I looked up sodium and aluminum phosphate, and you see it's made from three compounds. In fact, I'm going to Google search it right now so I can tell you exactly what it's made from. Let's see, sodium, aluminum, and you know what's messed up? You, I get half of it typed out and it pops up. So let me tell you, let me see if I can find the one that I found. And uh, here you go, this is the one. It's a chemical used in food processing. It is synthetically produced, so it's not natural. It's synthetically produced from aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide. Now, in case you're not sure, phosphoric acid is what I've warned you about that's in Coca-Cola that eats away at your bone structure, your calcium. Judith Baker's talked about this. Other health people have talked about this. I've talked about it. Other alternative news people, whatever, radio show hosts have talked about it. So sodium aluminum phosphate. Sodium aluminum phosphate, and it's a chemical used in food processing. It is synthetically produced from aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide. All three of those, none of them are good for you. None of them are good for you, okay? Aluminum, obviously, I don't have to tell you why that's not good for you, okay? Um, sodium hydroxide is... Uh, one of the, if I remember correctly, they use it um, in drain cleaner, like Drano. So you're taking Drano, phosphoric acid, which is known to eat away at your bone structure, and powdered aluminum, mixing it together, and they're using it in food. This blew my mind. I had no clue. Now, the only 
The only company that I've found that does not use it is Bisquick. Only company. All the other pancake, uh, and I mean everything, go look. Go to your local store. Go look at a box of pancake mix, whether it's the store's brand, whether it's uh, you know Hungry Jack or Aunt Jemima or whatever. Look at all of them. They all use sodium aluminum phosphate. Why? Why are you putting a mixture of aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide? Drain cleaner. They're taking powdered aluminum, phosphoric acid, and Drano and mixing it together and putting it in your powdered pancakes that you're making for your family, that you're making for your kids, that you're eating. Unbelievable. Sodium aluminum phosphate. I'm going to keep repeating it until everybody writes this down and put this is a big one on the list of no-nos that you should not be eating. Sodium aluminum phosphate. Sodium aluminum phosphate. Again, it is synthetically produced from aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mom, can I have some aluminum pancakes, please? And interesting, by the way, that there's aluminum in the food and aluminum in the chemtrails. And the aluminum screws up the soil, which you'll also see in Mike Murphy's movie. You see how it all dovetails together? Tell me again they're not trying to poison us. Tell me again this isn't intentional. It's all coincidental, right? I'm the crazy one because I see the pattern? No. If you don't see it, you're either in denial or you're really, you've been dumbed down. It's not coincidental that there's aluminum powder in the food and in the crap they're spraying in the sky. Not to mention what they put in the water. Coincidence? I think not. I don't buy into that. It's not coincidental. And why the hell are they putting this in the food anyway? Oh, and it's also, uh, apparently, it's also used in baking powder. So now I'm going to have to go check all my baking powder. <sighs> Unbelievable. You can, you, now you got to see. Oh, and in its alkaline form, it's, in, in its alkaline form, it's used as an emulsifier in processed cheese. It's used in baking powder because most of its action takes place at baking temperatures rather than when the dough or batter is mixed at room temperature. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? I'll read that again. It's used in baking powder because most of its action takes place at baking temperatures. wonder what actions that would be, considering you're putting aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide, Drano. In food. So now, not only is this crap used in that, but it's used in processed cheese. That's lovely. Well, no more cheese. I don't really eat, I eat, well, I don't eat the processed American crap. So that would probably be, I wonder if it's all cheeses like Swiss. Let's find out. Or just processed American. No. Any of these cheeses, pro, any, any gift pack cheeses, anything. Oh, wow. Wow. So yellow processed cheese. Any processed cheese it's used in. Any processed cheese. Wow. So when you go get the single cheese slices and you put them on your, on your sandwich, like the craft slices, ooh, it's got milk in it made with real milk. Yeah, and aluminum and phosphoric acid and sodium hydroxide too. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 -mm. Un effing believable. Un effing believable. So, all processed cheese and apparently baking powder. I wonder if it's all baking powder. Unbelievable. Why do they need, why, why is it, why can't you just have sodium bicarbonate, which is typically what baking soda is, baking powder? Why, why can't you have that? Unbelievable. You got to add aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide. 
And like Tim Watts pointed out, credit to him, you know, they take three things, aluminum, phos- phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide, and they, they put it together to, you know, sodium, aluminum, phosphate. And they try to make it sound much better, and it, it rolls off the tongue. Oh, look, it's not so dangerous. It sounds innocuous. Meanwhile, again, it's powder aluminum, phosphoric acid, and sodium hydroxide. Why don't you just buy Drano, save yourself the money, go buy a bottle of Drano, and do Drano shots in the morning? Or with your lunch? And again, I'm learning a lot of this as I'm telling you. Because I just found this crap the other day. I had no idea what this was. I randomly checked the box and saw something that caught my eye. The word aluminum. Sodium and phosphate always catch my eye. But the word aluminum in my food... You know, that was a ding, 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 ding. Warning, warning, danger, Will Robinson, danger. A red flag went right up. Why is there aluminum in my food? Then you look up what this crap is. Unbelievable. We're getting poisoned on all fronts. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to, when you go to the store, you need to look at what's in your food. You need to look at what's in your food. No more processed cheese, none of it. Can't can't eat any of this stuff anymore. I mean, you can't eat anything. But no, they're not trying to kill us. No. I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Time to wake up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hour number one up, hour number two coming up. I will be shifting gears in hour two, moving away from the health section, I guess you could say, but I figured I would donate the first hour going over all these health topics. Just unbelievable. Sodium, aluminum, phosphate. No, no. Research and find out what where it's in your food. We're going to break. We'll break back. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with hour number two here on this live Sunday edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye from federaljack.com. Don't forget to check out the website, federaljack.com, filled with ebooks, videos, articles, my radio show archives, links to hundreds of truth movies, including right now, Why in the World Are They Spraying? It is up there. A complete page for you to go watch it, not only watch it, but then a link to go purchase the video if you see fit to do so. So check it out. All right. I did want to shift gears a little bit, but I'm going to have to do so ever so slowly because one of the things I wanted to talk about involves health again and it was talked about, you heard IRN briefly discuss it, so I, I decided to, to, I would just uh, I, I, we would stay on the topic of health for at least one more segment and we can get we can get into the other things I wanted to tear apart really quick on today's show, but you heard them talk about the West Nile emergency in Texas where the outbreak is coming from. We must go there and spray. Not since the 60s have they done this kind of stuff. You'll hear them, t- uh, them talk about it. But they, I mean, they are just hyping this. And I, who knows? Uh, perhaps there really is a huge West Nile problem. But let us not forget that they already have the technology to spread things through mosquitoes. So is this... A natural problem or is this a man-made problem you know problem reaction solution the Hegelian dialectic just remember Bill Gates is the guy that threw out mosquitoes into the audience that one uh, was it a year or two ago I think it was at Ted or one of his little uh, expos and uh, he threw out the mosquitoes into the audience and talked about how they would vaccinate people even if they didn't want it using mosquitoes. And let's not forget Eric Traub, Nazi scientist. Plum Island was created pretty much by him. Traub's work involved ticks. Anybody with Lyme disease should go look into that. Go look up Plum Island. So if they can dick with insects and put diseases and stuff in them who knows if this west nile thing isn't uh, you know man-made to create a bigger problem and the reason i say that is because suddenly now there's a state of emergency in texas very convenient 
We live in the age of state of emergencies. I don't know if anybody realizes this, but we're constantly under a state of emergency. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, it's, there's always an emergency. You need the government to respond to it. Look, we're in a state of emergency. Can't you see? And now they're spraying insecticides, which they're, you're going to hear them say, oh, it's perfectly healthy. But just remember, back in the day when they used to spray DDT, they said it was healthy, too. They also said that Agent Orange was healthy. Now to the deadly outbreak of the West Nile virus. The Centers for Disease Control says 26 people nationwide have died from it. There are nearly 700 cases spread across 43 states. Mosquitoes carry the disease, and Texas is considered the epicenter of the outbreak. Ten people there have died, and more than 200 got sick. Last night, four planes in Dallas loaded with the insecticide took to the air and sprayed for a second time this week. Joining us now is Joe Conlon. He's a technical advisor for the American Mosquito Control Association, also a retired Navy entomologist with extensive worldwide experience in mosquito control. Joe, thanks for being here this morning. I guess You're the welcome. question is, after hearing that they've done this twice, did it not work the first time, or is the problem just that bad? The problem is just that bad, and you've got an extensive area in order to spray to keep the disease in check. It's how, a large area. How will we know when it's actually making an impact? When the amount of um, mosquitoes go down in the traps that they're catching, and obviously in the lessener, lessening of cases of uh, West Nile virus. That's really about the only way you're going to be able to tell. So they're spraying this crap. Telling you, we know it's going to kill the mosquitoes, but the only way you're going to really be able to tell is if there's less mosquitoes getting caught and if less people get West Nile virus. So until then, we're going to have to keep spraying heavy doses of this crap. And people are like, oh, it's okay. Don't forget there's trucks driving around too with the sprayers. That's how they used to do it back in the day. They, they did the flying too, but they also drove around with the trucks spewing out the back. When I was a kid, they did it. We had gypsy moths. We had a huge gypsy moth infestation, and they rode around in these vans. And they, my mother made a stay in the house. She sealed the windows with tape. She, she wasn't playing. She, we, she sealed everybody in the house. They, you know, they made everybody go inside, and they sprayed. And the next morning, when you went outside, I mean, there were just gypsy moths, literally thousands upon thousands of them just laying dead all over the backyard. So I remember when they sprayed for that crap when I was a kid. And we had, a, we had to scoop them up and put them into, um, we would put them into garbage can lids and pour gasoline on them to burn them so to make sure they were, they were gone and they wouldn't reinfest or there was no eggs or anything inside them. But I remember the, the lawn being covered with them. You couldn't even see the grass. It was just black. So whatever they sprayed, I mean, these things fell out of the trees. Just You would hear, you heard them all night long. It sounded like huge raindrops hitting the, the floor. You know, the ground. And you'd hear the, the grass rustling. If there were leaves or whatever, you'd hear them hitting bushes. You'd hear them hitting the roof. I mean, the, it, literally, the whole town was covered with them. Everybody had to clean them up and burn them. What the hell is in that stuff? But, hey, we know it's okay. We can't tell you if it's even going to, you know, there's really no way to even tell if it's working properly until everything is dead. But, you know, trust us. It's safe. And you talk about them having to spray more because the problem is that big. Is this safe to keep doing this? I mean, I imagine if I was living there where they're spraying this, I'd be a little concerned. Well, I can understand people's concerns there. Uh, but the insecticides they're using have been fully evaluated by the EPA and have been deemed to not pose an unreasonable risk if they're utilized according to the label. The amount of pesticides... If they're used according to the label. And how do we know they're being used according to the label? And why should I trust the EPA when they've lied multiple times? Why should I have any belief in anything the EPA tells me? Again, they told us that D DDT was okay. And it's known to be a carcinogen now. It's a big no-no. You can't spray that crap anywhere. But hey, back in the day, it was okay. Agent Orange, it was okay. It doesn't cause any problems. It only took the U.S. government over 40 years to admit that they had actually caused harm to their own soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines. But hey, the EPA says it's safe, so you should not be worried. The EPA, they got your back. They're spraying in Texas right now. Per acre is that much. Hmm. That's what they're putting out per acre. Now, the he's, hold, he's holding up this little tiny blue vial, or this little glass vial with blue liquid in it, which is probably water with uh, you know, blue uh, food coloring or windshield washer fluid is what it looks like 
How, how does he? Why would he be walking around with a vial of the insecticide? If he spilled it, that stuff would be toxic to him. So why would he be walking around with that stuff in his pocket? It looks like windshield washer fluid. And this is only, only this is the only amount they're spraying. It's not a big deal. Come on, don't be afraid. Yeah, it only takes one hot particle uh, of uh, uh, radioactive material like uh, cesium or uranium, like the, in the case of depleted uranium, to get inside your your lungs and cause lung cancer, putts. So even a small amount of something bad is still bad. But hey, this guy's a talking head, and he says the EPA has your best interests at heart. So you've got nothing to fear. Ingredient that actually kills the mosquitoes is only two grams of this, a little less than two grams, which by weight is about the same as two postage stamps. So we're not talking about a lot. And now you see how he, he, he tries to play that off like it's not a big deal. It's only two grams of this stuff is what they use per acre. Two grams of the stuff is what they use per acre to kill all the mosquitoes, the millions of mosquitoes per acre. But no, it's not harmful to humans. And he's acting like it's only a little amount. What are you worried about? Um, if it's that potent, that two ounces of the stuff, the same weight of two postage stamps, as you put it, can kill millions of mosquitoes over the area of one acre, what could it do to humans? Oh, but don't worry about that. Well, can I see the, the, the testing that you've done? The, the, the medical testing and stuff that you have to prove that it won't hurt anybody? Oh, we don't have that. Well, then how can I trust you? Trust us, we're the government. Right. right. Checks in the mail, too. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. And as much as I want to, I can't even get away from the health issue. It's, I mean, it's that in your face. It's just, during the break, uh, I had a conversation with my wife, and I asked her to go check the food in the cabinets for the sodium aluminum phosphate. And she said, things are good. And then one of the, th one of the things, because uh, I have uh, shells and cheese, Velveeta shells and cheese. And I said, you know, that's processed cheese crap. I'll bet you it has it in there. So she looks and she says, no, there's no aluminum. It's just sodium phosphate. I said, well, that's two of the three. It's still Drano and phosphoric acid. And it, it, it's, it is. It's sodium hydroxide and phosphoric acid. Why are they putting sodium hydroxide in food? Why? I mean, are you kidding me? If you look up sodium phosphates, right? It says, uh, and they, this is what they give you if you're going to have a colonoscopy. That's what they give you to flush your system out, by the way. It's, they, they give you oral sodium phosphates. But uh, it says, it carries in some a risk of kidney injury in the form of phosphate uh, nephropathy, which I don't really know what that is, but, or nephropathy, well, I can't pronounce the word. Anyway, it, it causes injury to the kidneys. So they give you this stuff to clean you out, to check your system for a medical procedure, but it may cause your kidneys problems. They're putting this in food. Why are they putting the same thing that they would clean you out with for a colonoscopy in your food? I can't stress this enough. Check the ingredients. I mean, I've already stopped eating about three quarters of what I used to eat over the past two years, and it, it now I'm, I'm going to have to cut off everything. I mean, they're going to make it really simple. I'm going to have to live on you know, bananas and, and nuts. I, I, I can't even eat iceberg lettuce anymore because that glows in the dark from the you know from California with the, the radiation from Fukushima. I mean, we are being hit on all fronts. It's just unbelievable. So even if it's not sodium aluminum phosphate, sodium phosphate, it's still sodium hydroxide and phosphoric acid. Sodium hydroxide is drain cleaner. Phosphoric acid, do I need to tell you any more? Phosphoric acid, it eats bone. Judith Baker's talked about this. If she actually drinks a Coca-Cola, she'll follow it with a calcium pill. Because she knows that you have to balance it out. Because it will literally attack the calcium in your bones. 
You can take Coca-Cola and pour it on the hood of a car, and the phosphoric acid will eat through the clear coat. Think I'm lying? Go do it. Don't get mad at me when it really eats the clear coat and screws your paint job up. I told you so. You can pour it on macadam, blacktop, and it'll eat through it. Over the, you know, I, I would say pour, pour a can of Coke on a spot in a blacktop where you know it's not going to rain or anything, and the Coca-Cola will have the chance just to sit there. And go back in like a day or two and look what it did to the blacktop. Toothpaste, too. Certain toothpaste you can do that with. When I was a kid, and we never put two and two together, but when I was a kid, uh, I, I think it was Aquafresh. One of the toothpastes, uh, you used to, if you, if you wrote stuff out on someone's driveway, like on Mischief Night in it, uh, by that morning, some of the toothpaste would have eaten into the macadam, the blacktop. So that's what you're putting on your teeth. But hey, it doesn't destroy the enamel. It doesn't destroy your teeth. Don't worry about that. It's good for you. Go eat the sodium hydroxide. Go eat the phosphoric acid. Unbelievable. So just one more thing to put on your list of do not want in my food. Sodium phosphates. Sodium phosphates. May sound innocuous, right? Well, sodium, it's a little bit of salt. And a phosphate, well, well, most people don't even know what a phosphate is. Oh, that, that, that sounds beneficial. I mean, it's probably used as a binding agent on a molecular level of some sort, which people probably don't even go that far. They hear sodium phosphate, and it's all oh, salt. It's that scientific name for salt. Mm. Wrong. They took the sodium of sodium hydroxide and the phosphoric in phosphoric acid and turned it into sodium phosphates. Remember, if you go into most states now, you can't buy uh, phosphates, uh, what do you call it, dishwashing detergent with phosphates in it because a lot of, they realized it was causing damage to the pipes and to the ecosystem and everything else. Well, that's in your food. The same stuff that you relied on to take the food grime off your plates in your dishwasher years ago. That's why the new soaps don't work, by the way, because they don't have phosphates in them. Everybody's bitching. You know, I can't clean my dishes anymore. 20 years ago, I'd run the dishwasher, and it would literally, it was great. You know, they they would come out spot-free and food-free. Well, that's because there were phosphates in there. Phosphoric acid. It would eat the crap off the plates. Well, they don't put it in there anymore because the phosphates were eating the lead pipes. Eating lead. Lead. Lead can shield you from radiation. And this stuff was eating it. Right through it, destroying them. Place I used to live, the pipes were so shot. If we had a backup, they asked all the residents not to use any type of drain cleaner because... It would literally peel away layers of what the, what was left of what little was left of the pipe on the inside, and it was from years and years of people pouring drain cleaner down the drains. Think about that for one minute. Think about that. The ingredient that they're putting in your food is what they took out of soaps, dishwasher soap, because it was destroying pipes. And wreaking havoc on the ecosystem when it would get dumped into sewers and water supply and everything else. It was causing problems. So they removed it from the soap. Because it was eating the pipes. But they leave it in the food supply. Again, they removed it from soap. The dishwashing detergent. Because it was eating pipes. Eating pipes. Eating metal. Do you think your stomach or your colon or anything inside of us is as strong as metal? I don't care what kind of lining it has to keep the stomach acid in. Do you think putting this crap into your body is beneficial in the slightest way at all? I don't. Sodium phosphates. So sodium aluminum phosphate, big no-no. Sodium phosphates, a big no-no. And I know some people are going to go, oh, I can't eat my favorite food anymore. Well, okay, stupid. 
then go ahead and keep eating it. Keep eating your poison then and die. I mean, that's, that, that's the choice you have. Either you pull your head from your ass and realize there's stuff in your food that's killing you and change the way you eat and the way you think about things. Or you, you stay in your slumber and you're going to die at a very young age because of the crap that's in your food. And you're going to have a horrible life because you're going to be depressed. Your body's going to be sore. You're not going to feel good. You're going to be tired. You don't know why. Because they're putting Drano in your food. They're putting phosphoric acid in your food. They are trying to kill you. Wise up so you can get out of this situation. The only way you can stop them from doing it is if you know they're doing it. They are literally trying to kill us all. It's just disgusting and we need to do something about this. We can stop it. We have the power. We need to stop this crap. Un friggin' acceptable. We're going to break. I'm gonna give a shout out to one of the anons in the chat room. Here you go, Popeye. Cashews, mixed nuts contains copper, magme, magamese, and something else. I got cut off. But why are they putting metal in mixed nuts? <laughs> I mean, this is insane, people. Do we? Well, it's good for you. I mean, your body needs it. It's a mineral. No. Do you know what they use when they put iron in food? They use ferrous iron. You know what ferrous iron is? It's metal shavings. You think I'm lying? You think their ferrous iron isn't metal shavings they're putting in the food? Go look up a video on YouTube. You'll see it. The guy does the experiment right in front of you. It opens the bag, everything right in front of you. Okay, it's not a, And you can see what it is. You can see which cereal it is. They, he put tape over some of it, but you get an you trust me, you'll know which cereal it is. It's cornflakes. Not regular cornflakes. You'll see which brand, but he takes them out, opens the bag in front of you, crushes it up, kind of like puts some water in there, makes it like a, a slurry, right? Blends it up, puts it in a bag with a magnet affixed to the inside, moves it around. The slurry, just and all, you, all it is is regular water, which you see, and the, 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 the bag mixes it up. It makes the slurry, mixes it around in the bag, dumps it out, and there's metal shavings stuck to the magnet. What do you think that is? That's their enriched with iron crap. They literally take metal shavings and put it in the food. Might be smaller particles of it, but it doesn't matter. And you heard them talking about the uh, birth control stuff. You see how they make things in nanoparticle size so it gets through these blood uh, barriers. You know, like in, in this case, it's a barrier to protect the testicles. They grind down this metal crap to the same, might, might not be as nanoparticle uh, uh, size as that stuff, but they grind it down to a fine particulate. And then you'll see it. It, it, it ends up showing up like a sludge on the magnet. That's not healthy for you. We're not supposed to ingest metal fragments. At all. Period. Why are they putting this crap in our food? Everything's GMO. It's already, you know, half the corn, more of it is, gen more than half of it's genetically modified. You can't get away from that. Good luck trying to find something organic. And if you do, it's 10 times the amount, so most people can't afford it. So they have to go get processed cheese. And they think the Kraft cheese slices, hey, it says it's made with real milk and calcium. It's fortified with, with you know, all the good stuff my kid needs. And these mothers and fathers have no idea that in that processed cheese is Drano and phosphoric acid. You might as well just give your kid a bottle of Drano to take to school. I mean, this is sick, and I don't blame the parents. You know, people can say, well, the parents should know, Popeye. Well, you know, a lot of people don't have any money. The system has been set up so that people are, are, are down on their, you know, the economy blows. Nobody can afford food. They get a, a, a flyer in the mail. Hey, come over to whatever, the local grocery store. Two for one on Kraft cheese. And when it says to herself, oh, you know, I can make my son some turkey sandwiches. At least I can give him a nice homemade turkey sandwich from me. 
So she goes and buys the bread and the turkey and the cheese. Well, the, the turkey's all processed, right? So it's all garbage. She ends up buying processed cheese, so it's got this crap in it. The bread, she doesn't notice. She thinks she's buying it uh, wholesome. But when you read bread ingredients, I, I have to literally I, – I, now I've, I get organic bread and I buy uh, bagels from a fresh bagel place that I use for you know buns or for sandwiches and stuff. I won't buy anything from the store anymore because most of it, if you go read the ingredients, it's got uh, – at the very least, it's got corn syrup in it and a, a ton of other crap that shouldn't be in your food. BHT is in some of it. That's an anti-foaming agent for rocket fuel. Because that, that should be in your food. You know? Why don't we just put acetone in my muffins? Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen. We need to educate ourselves as to exactly what we are putting into our bodies. It is not healthy to be eating Drano by any means. It is not healthy to be eating phosphoric acid or aluminum by any means. And yet we are ingesting it in many ways that we don't even know. So I urge parents out there, if you're going out and buying this crap for your kid, I know it prices are tough. We it, Shop around. I have to go to like 18 different places just to get my basics. But seriously, you have to pay attention. Your kid's are the future of this planet. And these sick bastards are poisoning them, as well as you. You shouldn't be ingesting this crap either. None of us should. We shouldn't be forced to do this. We shouldn't... There, there shouldn't be the need for any of us to even worry about this crap. So when someone says to me, there's not an agenda to cull the population, I say, oh, you are wrong. When they say there's no evidence, I say, oh, you are wrong. Look in your food. Do you think that's there by coincidence? No. If they really cared about you, don't you think they would want to give you a healthy product? Don't you think they would want to give you something that would benefit you? But no. They give you drain cleaner, phosphoric acid, and powdered aluminum mixed together. Or just drain cleaner and phosphoric acid. Or aspartame. Or corn syrup that has mercury in it. Or Splenda, which is no good for you. I could go on and on and on. It is not a coincidence. I'm, I'm beyond convinced that this is being done on purpose. And anybody with half a brain who looks at the evidence will come to the same conclusion. The people that are in denial, it's time to stop being in denial. You can't put your head under the covers anymore. I'm going to keep eating my Velveeta shells and cheese Popeye. I don't care if you just told me it's got sodium phosphates in it. I'm going to keep eating it. Really? Okay. You're eating one of the ingredients that they put in Dish or they used to put in dish soaps and some laundry detergents still have in it. So you you know what? Why don't you just go buy a gallon of all and pour that on your corn flakes in the morning and you can have all flakes or sodium phosphate flakes. Ooh, enriched with iron. You think this is a joke? It's not. I mean, they're literally trying to poison us all. They're trying to kill us. Then they're spraying this crap in the sky. And no, I don't want you to be afraid. I don't want you to, oh my God, the sky is falling. No, we can stop this. We have the power to turn this around. That's the beauty of the situation. We have the power. But in order for you to even be pissed off and do anything, you must know what they're doing. So I don't want you to fear what they're doing. I want you to be aware of what they're doing and take steps to prevent your poisoning. Because with knowledge comes power. See, now I've told you about the sodium phosphates and the sodium aluminum phosphate, right? How many of you out there are going to go and actually look into this now? A lot of you, I'm sure. That's why I've harped on it today. I actually put a lot of the stuff I was going to talk about today off to the side to focus on this because this really just blew my mind the other day. And as I was talking to you today, I, I, I just felt that, you know what? This takes precedent over other things. It really does. Because it's in your cabinet right now. 
They have their poison in your house. It's near your kids. And it's my responsibility, because I know about this, to warn you. I don't want to see any harm come to any of you or your children, your husbands, your wives, your aunts, your uncles, any of your family or your friends. And that's why I'm trying to warn you. I don't want you to be afraid. We'll get through this. But you need the knowledge to be able to get through it. And that's why I'm warning you all about this. This is definitely not a joke. These people are sick. And you know what? They don't, most of these elitist douchebags don't eat any of this stuff. They eat fully organic food raised in certain areas. Pesticide-free, everything else. But hey, the pesticides are okay to drive around your neighborhood and spray out the back of a truck or dump out of a C-130 Hercules over top of your head. But the Queen of England won't have any of that crap in her food supply in their organic gardens. It's not good enough for her, but it's good enough for you. Think about that. They don't care. So it's time for us to care. We'll be right back. Final segment, ladies and gentlemen. As always, I want to thank you all for tuning in and taking the time out of your day or night, whether you're listening live or to a rebroad or you pull the archive or you're listening on YouTube. I just want to thank everybody that takes their time to listen. And, uh, you know, I don't come here to speak to the wall, and I appreciate the fact that you bring me into your life for a few hours on whatever day of the week it is that you happen to hear the show. And that uh, I'm very humbled that you you all listen to me and take what I have to say seriously. So I try to provide you with the most accurate info that I can. Uh, I take my responsibility seriously. So I thank you all for listening and taking part in the chat room and everything else. Uh, last segment here, there's a few things I want to cover really quick. Switching gears, the one thing I did want to bring up that I thought was kind of shady and that I did not get into today is a nurse who was one of the quote-unquote heroes of the Batman shooting spree has suddenly drowned. She took care of the victims of the shooting spree, and there's a picture of her uh, with, I think it was uh, President Obama. There was a bunch of the nurses and stuff, and uh, her picture was taken with him, and she suddenly drowned. She went out for a swim in her backyard, and they found her dead. It says she was just swimming in a lake close to her home when she is believed to have drowned. So she went swimming, and suddenly she drowned at the lake. What did she know? Is it a coincidence? Is it a natural thing? Did she drown naturally? Uh, I, I will tell you that it is not uncommon for if someone's swimming, especially in a big lake like that, uh, because the the water would be dark. It would be much harder to see someone coming up on you from underneath. Uh, it would not be uncommon for if somebody wanted to get rid of somebody to easily slip into the water as a bather, especially if that person didn't know who that person was. Uh, the the target didn't know who the uh, the predator was. The predator could swim underneath the water pull her under, hold her feet under, clamp their hand over her mouth, and once she drowned, let her body float up to the surface and swim away. You know, oh, she accidentally drowned. Oh, it's a shame. You know, she was swimming and she was such a nice lady. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened because that's just me speculating. I don't know. But I find it highly suspicious that somebody involved in the Aurora, Colorado uh, shooting aftermath uh, of taking care of the victims who, you know, gag order put on them, especially after they all went around saying that there was more than one person. You saw the judge put a gag order on any everything because it might, it might destroy the, the credibility of the case and the investigation, blah, 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 blah. So the judge puts a gag order, and uh, who knows, maybe she, maybe she had talked, maybe she knew something. I mean, only time will tell if her family knows if she got threats or anything, but... Uh, maybe she just knew too much. Maybe it was just an accidental drowning. Maybe it is just that. Uh, it's just an un, uh, an unforeseen, uh, uh, unfortunate accident. But it is kind of shady that she happened to be involved in taking care of the victim. So just keep an eye on that. 
uh, it, it's her name was Nurse Jenny Gallagher. So look into that. Anybody out there that looks wants to look into it further, I'm gonna look into it a little further on the side myself. But I wanted to bring it up because it, it 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 does at least throw up a red flag. The fact that this woman who helped out is now dead. So I just thought I'd point that out. I didn't get a chance to bring that up earlier because I got sidetracked on the, the health issue thing, which is not getting sidetracked. It's very important, and I'm, I'm glad I actually uh, pushed things off to talk about it because uh, I, I it needed to be talked about. It was something that was on my mind. It blew my mind, and I'm sure that if uh, I didn't know there's other, not that I'm the arbiter of anything, but if I didn't know there's other people out there that didn't know either. So uh, I thought it was important to bring it up and cover it. So I'm not really, I'm not pissed that I, I, I covered it in the slightest bit. I'm glad that I donated the time, but I did want to cover the fact that this lady mysteriously drowned. And again, it could be, uh, could just be the fact that she drowned, but it is something to keep an eye on, something very interesting to keep an eye on indeed. Uh, you, you never, one never knows. Uh, the other thing I wanted to cover really quick is there's a report coming out of Israel saying that Al-Qaeda is planning a massive terror attack on an Israeli plane. Is this a false flag event being formulated by people behind the scenes to push us into World War III? Perhaps. Don't know. It, it could just be propaganda to be used that if something does happen, then they can say, see, 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 laying the groundwork, laying the backstory. Do I know if it's true? Or not, I don't. Uh, just from but coming out of the Israeli press, says that Al Qaeda is planning a massive terror attack on Israeli plane. So uh, look forward to probably Mossad uh, attacking and causing another attack in, in, in an effort to try to blame it on. I'm sure Al Qaeda, who you know, oh, they're working with Iran. Mm, okay, really? You should go look and uh, do your research on the. Uh, different uh, religious sects and see uh, who really doesn't like who and who's been battling who for, I don't know, 4,000 years. And tell me again that Iran would work with Al-Qaeda. Morons. But most Americans don't look at that because, hey, they just all have rags on their heads and they're all from the Middle East, so they must be the same, even though Iran is actually Persia and Iranians are Persian, not Arabs. But, you know, most dumb Americans don't know that because they've been dumbed down through vaccines through disinfo, through education, dancing with the stars, music, mass media, bimbos with big boobs on TV telling you what you should know. That's why nobody knows about this kind of stuff. The average person, anyway. Go read. Before we get into another war, go read and do your homework, okay? Iran would never work with Al-Qaeda. Just wouldn't happen. Just It's not going to happen. Sunni, Shia, not, don't get along. Go look it up. It's like the 9-11 hijackers wearing a, you know, they're Sunni hijackers supposedly, but they're wearing Shia head rags, the, the red head rags. Um, really? That'd be like a black guy wearing a Ku Klux Klan robe. Doubt it. Oil and water do not mix. And it's that drastic of a difference. And yet... They want you to believe that. But, you know, this is the same people that the Bush administration didn't even know the difference between Sunni and Shia when we went into Iraq. That's a red flag right there. That points right back to what I just told you about 9-11 and other things. These people didn't even know the difference. And these are the same propagandists that are telling you, oh, my God, Iran could be working with al-Qaeda. They've said it before. And I guarantee you, if something happened to Israel and they said it was an Al-Qaeda attack, Israel would say that it was an Al-Qaeda cell tied to Iran and they have to go in there. You need to educate yourself before we get dragged into World War III. And you're like, yeah, man, you terrorists. We gotta kick their ass. You need to wake up. You need to stop buying into this G.I. Joe bullshit. Pisses me off to no end, man. I'll tell you what, if I was in that Arab country, I'd kick some ass. You wouldn't do anything. If you came under fire, you'd probably crap your pants, you armchair quarterback. Rooting for someone else's kid to go die so you can feel like a man. This country is going down the crapper, and people need to step up to the plate. I'm tired of hearing excuses why you can't do it. 
Everybody can do it. Everybody can play a part in fixing this. And it's time that everybody did stand up and play a part in fixing this. I'm over the excuses. I'm over people telling me they can't do it. Well, I'm afraid, Popeye. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I can't do it. Oh, you're afraid? Well, you know what? I got a cure for that. How many times have I recited the litany against fear? At least 10 or 15, right? On air? In the past year and a half? I'll do it again. Right now. I know it from memory. The litany against fear. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. I will face my fear. I will permit it to pass over me and through me. And when it has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. Where the fear has gone, there will be nothing. Only I will remain. It's time to get the courage and the balls to stand up. They're poisoning us in our food. They're spraying crap in the sky. They kill people with wanton bloodlust and don't care. They stage, quote-unquote, terror events to bring us into wars in countries with people that have nothing against us. Maybe their politicians don't like our politicians, but they don't want to eradicate you and your kids. That's propaganda. Fear. They're using fear to control you. Rise above the fear and master it. Take control of your fear. And then when they come at you with this crap, you can look at them and say, no. Like in the end of the Matrix with Neo, he puts his hand up and he says, no. It's a metaphor. You say no. No more. I will not accept it. This is Sparta! I will not silently acquiesce to your garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. Thank you for tuning in. No fear, only love. I love you all, and I'll catch you in a few days. Till then, I'm out. <laughs>